So in my attempts to become more popular on the internet, I've been going to Reddit and talking with the people at R Flipping, a subreddit for resale. And let me tell you, they give some terrible, terrible advice. There's some good advice in there. About, I don't know, one in 10 people talking has any idea what they're talking about. But the vast majority are just idiots who are uh, saying whatever they think, whatever they feel like saying. There really is no criteria for what's a good or bad comment to them. There are just comments. And so I wanted to go through and tell you seven things that I've seen people say that it is just terrible advice. Uh, and I'll explain why it's terrible advice. But uh, just so you know, these are all things that if you see someone saying on the internet, you can just block them because they're not going to add anything of value to your life. The first thing is when they promise you a plan for success. This is almost always someone who's trying to sell you a course or mentorship. Occasionally, they're just doing it for imaginary internet points, which, you know, you do you, I guess. But the kind of person who tells you, oh, if you just do these things like I did, and usually they're very hard things to do with a very high barrier to entry where they can get away with making these absurd claims because no one is going to follow through or at least no one's going to follow through with them to follow up on it. Um, when someone does that, you know, okay, probably this is not true. Now, I'm not saying there aren't people out there who've developed systems that are scalable and reproducible. Like if you look at Daily Refinement, what he does, the idea of inventorying things and numbering things, it's, it, that's, that's not selling a plan for success. That's just outlining the basic aspect of any business. He's not saying, oh, if you just like go to this store at this hour and give somebody in the corner $10, you're gonna make all your money back. What he's saying is different than what I'm talking about. There's no plan that you can just copy and paste into your life. I know people want there to be, but there really isn't. Everyone has their own unique issues, their struggles, the things they're good at, the things they're bad at. And while the truth of the matter is like, yeah, you have to create reproducible systems, scalable systems and processes that allow you to reproduce actions over and over again, what those actions are is going to be unique to what you bring to the table. The second thing is there are people out there who say they're never going to offer free shipping because they want the buyer to know how much shipping costs. I don't like this for two reasons. Reason number one, who cares? Who cares what the buyer thinks about shipping costs? When you put a number out there, as your store grows and have you have more inventory that ages, you are much more likely to have bad prices. Now, yes, you can change shipping profiles and policies and that kind of stuff. But if you say, I'm going to charge $5.95 for everything that's 14 ounces, that's fine until USPS inevitably changes prices or we all go to ground advantage and it, it's just a bad idea. What I think you should do across the board is offer free shipping except on unique items where the, the case is self-evident. Like, oh, it's a 95 pound printer. Yeah, okay, I get it. Don't offer it on that. But to say you should never offer free shipping totally ignores the fact that in essentially every single circumstance, on eBay at least, offering free shipping is gonna result in more sales. Oftentimes at a higher price. It's this outdated way of thinking where you feel like you have to prove something to the buyer when really all you should be doing is finding out ways to increase your profit and your income and revenue by extension. This third thing is very similar and it's not promoting. There are people on this subreddit who will say, I'm not giving eBay any more of my money. Who cares? You're spiting yourself. If you promote something at a certain rate, but you charge a proportionally higher rate, who cares if eBay's making more money, you're making more money. There are so many people who develop this identity of a flipper and like they have to do this. They have to win every battle with eBay, with buyers, all that kind of stuff. I just don't get it. It's bad advice. And I feel like it's people substituting this idea of a, an identity in, in replacement for making money. Like, oh, the reason I sell things is because that's who I am, not the reason I sell things is to improve my life in tangible ways. I don't answer everyone's questions. If they're dumb questions, they don't deserve an answer. And I think that in order to maintain uh, enjoyment in your business so you can keep working at it day in and day out for years and years and years, you can't uh, always let buyers 
treat you like trash. I, uh, they were saying, if there's a 1% chance of this converting in a sale, I'm going to do it. Here's the counterpoint. If you have good items, you don't have to bend the knee to these dum-dums. Okay, someone who's not an idiot's going to buy it. And so what you're doing is just wasting your time, wasting your energy, when you don't have to do that. You can just let the idiots keep it moving and wait for somebody with a brain to buy your stuff. Because again, if you have the right stuff, you don't have to worry about idiots. The fifth thing that I see on a lot of online forums, Facebook, YouTube, Reddit, wherever, there's this fear mongering about scammers. Oh, am I being scammed? Should I cancel the sale? I don't sell on eBay because the scammers are gonna get me. When in reality, the amount of money you're gonna lose by being scammed, while not zero, is relatively insignificant compared to the potential profit you're gonna make by running a regular business and not being totally obsessed with this idea of, oh, someone got the better of me. Yes, there's criminals out there. I've been robbed. I'm not going to stop having possessions because they might get stolen. It doesn't make sense to me. I see it a lot. Don't listen to people who tell you not to do something out of a very small potential bad thing that might happen to you. That's fear mongering. It's bad. The sixth and seventh thing are two sides of the same coin. And one is a mistake that beginners make. And one is a mistake that more advanced, I'd say moderate, intermediate people make. And that's one, not looking at completed sales. A lot of times people who are new will say, well, it's going for this much here. And oftentimes it's quickly corrected, but it doesn't change the fact that there are a lot of people out there, especially on non <laughs> reselling related subreddits like game collecting, who are only gonna look at what something is listed at and they're gonna extrapolate that to be the value when it's just not true. A lot more goes into it. Now the second kind of people, number seven on the list, who are correcting number six people are the ones who go, here's the completed sales. So it's not worth that much. And what that fails to do is recognize that there's some variability in prices after things have sold. Here's a great example. Roll Doll got canceled by the big bad I don't know who, some entity somewhere. And they, they took the word fat, among others, I'm sure, out of his books, because that's gonna hurt little kids' feelings if they're fat, I guess. Uh, so everyone's buying all these books because they're terrified that Big Friendly Giant, is that one of his books? Is no longer gonna be able to be purchased, I guess. I don't know what the, what the fear is. Again, fear mongering. So what you're seeing on the sold listings is not an accurate assessment of the market value because it's rapidly changing. It's rapidly going up. The completed sales are not going to show you at face value how a price is trending. Sometimes the active listings might be much higher than the sold price because all the lower value items have already sold, but the demand is still there. When events like that occur, you can't just rely on the sold listings. Sometimes you have to take into consideration uh, overall market trends based on active listings as well. There are my seven things that I just think are absolutely ridiculous about Reddit. If you're new, please subscribe. I don't say things. I try not to at least say things that are ridiculous. I want to help you make some money. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you like the video and uh, comment below with the absolutely ridiculous things you've seen people say on the internet. I'll see you guys later.